Hi, I'm Chris Walls. Welcome back to the attic. Uh, I've been away for uh, a few weeks. It's been, been kind of a busy time at the Old Town School of Folk Music where I teach. And um, amongst all that, all that busyness of uh, teaching and a uh, uh, new session with, um, with a lot of new students and new classes, my wife and I actually took uh, a little time off and uh, went down to New Orleans for a little vacation, which is always always a marvelous time and uh, I've been catching up on a lot of things including um, doing up some videos here for the for the attic sessions and um, we had um, we've actually had the, the the passing of a couple of great uh, musicians uh, dr. John from New Orleans at great New Orleans uh, jazz and uh, funk pianist and uh, before him somebody who I think was was an influence on uh, a lot of us that started wanting to finger pick back in the late 70s early 80s and uh, and we're looking for somebody who's exemplifying a little bit of a different style a little bit of a more unique style and uh, many of us hit upon the music and stylings of a guy named Leon Redbone who was really something and uh, and he just passed away recently at the age of 69. And um, I can remember, again, I, I know I've said on these, uh, on these videos that uh, a lot of my early influences uh, came from the radio, which they did. I can remember hearing a radio broadcast of a thing called Folk Festival USA, which was uh, a nationally syndicated radio show. And uh, what it would do is it would highlight live acoustic music performances from all around the United States and they they did one episode where they spent the um, they spent the time uh, for that broadcast um, at the Pete Seeger um, Hudson Valley uh, Festival, the Clearwater Festival and they had all sorts of people playing and singing and in the middle of all this was a little set by a guy named Leon Redbone and I'd never heard him before but I thought man this guy is just so funky and so out there uh, I gotta give him a listen and and uh, one of the early songs that I tried to figure out from that recording of him playing at the at the Clearwater Festival was this old tune Lulu's Back in Town it's kind of a ragtime uh, Finger picking thing that he would do on the guitar that I just thought was really, really fun. And uh, I hadn't thought about that tune in a long time. Um, but with, uh, with Mr. Leon's passing, I thought, oh, maybe it's, it's time to dust that off and uh, you know, see, what, uh, see what it has to say. And the, I got a different guitar helping me out here today. This, this guitar, I say this about every instrument that I own, this guitar is kind of special, <laughs> but they're all special. But this one really is. Uh, this one is an interesting uh, representation of guitar luthier building and all that kind of thing. Uh, it looks like a, a Martin, and it's actually not. It's a, it's a Japanese copy of uh, a Martin, uh, an OM model, and it's uh, it was made by the Tokai Guitar Company, and uh, it's called on the inside of the wood. There's a little stamp, and it's called a Cat's Eyes model. And uh, in the 70s, uh, the Tokai Company in uh, in Japan wanted to be the Japanese Martin uh, of um, of that part of the world. And I guess they got uh, permission to, to visit the Martin Company and uh, get some information and maybe take some measurements or something like that. And uh, began building some, uh, some really great, um, I guess, copies, reproductions, tributes, you might say, to the original, uh, the Martin guitar. And this guitar was owned by another uh, finger-picking uh, blues artist that I admire uh, a lot and have for many years a woman named Rory Block and uh, if you get a chance to catch her she's really something um, she has this incredibly powerful style 
uh, on the guitar, also uh, as a singer and as a songwriter. She's a she's a real uh, she's a real sort of deep spirit. Uh, I got a chance to see her a few times. Um, I got to open for her when she played at the Old Town School of Folk Music a few years ago. And I saw on her website that she was getting rid of some old equipment, some, some stage clothes and uh, some sound equipment and some guitars. And I saw that this one was uh, up for sale. And um, I remembered that this had been her road guitar because I'd seen it in a lot of pictures and I think I might have even seen her perform with this guitar. And, and I thought, oh, this would be good to, good to own. And uh, the, the price that she was asking was certainly fair. And um, we, we met before, uh, before the show where I opened for her. And, uh, and I said, uh, I see that guitar, uh, that, that Tokai is, is still for sale. Um, is, there, is there a way I can buy it? And she said, well, I got somebody else who's interested in it. Um, and she mentioned that this person is kind of a collector uh, of guitars. And I said, well, I don't know if this is going to sway your uh, opinion at all. But uh, I don't want to collect it. I, I want to play it. And, uh, and she sort of took that answer in. And she said, well, let me talk to this other person who's interested in this guitar. And spoke to them. And they, uh, they backed off. And she let me, she let me buy it. So, so this, is a, this is a neat, neat finger-picking guitar. And I guess how she got this instrument was uh, she was on a tour of Japan. See if I get all these people, if I remember everybody that was on this little tour. I think it was her, Bruce Coburn, um, John Renborn, and Happy Trom. And they got uh, invited to go to the Tokai factory. And I guess the president of the factory said, guys, choose any guitar you like. And she picked, she picked this one. And I think they made a, a present of that guitar to her. So, uh, so this is the one that I keep at the school. And I teach with it. So it gets plenty of use. Um, I'm going to do this old Leon Redbone tune. This Lulu's back in town. Um, and I'm going to do it in his tuning. Now, what he used to do, and it took me a long time to figure this out. It's a very simple thing, but it took me a while to figure out this is what he was doing. Leon Redbone used to play with a lot of um, jazz instruments. Uh, not he himself, but uh, players uh, who played um, clarinet and saxophone and trumpet and like that. And they all like to play in flat keys. And sometimes playing in a flat key on the guitar means, um, you know, you go through capoing and uh, different chord shapes and things that might not be as easy uh, or give you the sound that you want um, as opposed to just playing in old the key of C which is a real nice friendly finger picking uh, position. So what Leon Redbone would do is he would tune his guitar down a whole step so when he would play a C chord he's actually playing a B flat chord. So so if you notice that this uh, this guitar sounds like it's pitched a little low, that's why I'm, uh, I'm going to do this old song in the same way, in the same manner that Leon Redbone, although I'm sure not picking nearly as great as he as he did. So um, there's a little bit of Lulu's back in town. Oh, where's that careless chambermaid? What'd she do with my razor blade? She misplaced it, I'm afraid, and it's got to be found. I asked her when she cleaned my room. What'd she do with my perfume? She can't lose it, boys, I gotta use it. Lulu's back in town. Gotta get my old tuxedo pressed. Gotta sew a button on my vest. Tonight I gotta look my best, oh Lulu's back in town Gotta find a half a buck somewhere Gotta shine my shoes and slick my hair I gotta look so debonair cause Lulu's back in town You can tell all them sweeties, all those blondes and brunettes 
That Mr. J regrets to say that he just won't be around Oh, tell the postman not to call I won't be back until the fall I might not even get back home at all Lulu's back in town Tell all them sweeties, all those blondes and brunettes That Mr. J regrets to say that he just won't be around Oh, tell the postman not to call I won't be back until the fall I might not even get back home at all Lulu's back in town Lulu's back in town Lulu's back in town <laughs> I haven't thought about that song in a long, long time. Uh, the old Lulu's back in town. So uh, if you've not ever checked out uh, any any Leon Redbone, uh, he made a ton of records, and um, and there's a lot of uh, footage of him that you can see. You can spend a lot of time just trying to figure him out because uh, he was he was quite an enigma I never got to see him live um, I had the chance he played the old town school and for some reason I, I was working or I don't know why I didn't, I didn't go to see that show but something must have prevented me because if I'd been available I certainly would have gone <laughs> so you know, rest in peace Leon Redbone uh, I think he left us all with a lot of wonderful music and, and a lot of wonderful memories um, the other thing about this low tuning, if you ever listen to any Carter family recordings, uh, Maybell would tune her guitar low just to fit wherever the voices are. Um, if you, uh, the worried man blues that they, that they play. It's pitched somewhere around, uh, you know, B flat like this guitar is right now. So, this beautiful guitar, which I got from from Rory Block, who is also someone to listen to. She is a, a force of nature, um, and hopefully, the you'll get a chance to see her. And uh, I did a workshop with her a number of years ago I, when I was an administrator at the school. I had her uh, come and give a workshop, and it was really fantastic. A ton of people, and she just taught everything by ear. She taught everybody to play a little bit like Robert Johnson. It was, it was pretty neat. So a lot of good music to listen to, a lot of good music to play, uh, a lot of great music to discover, along with the stories that they have to tell. So hopefully I'll have another one for you soon. I'm gonna get back on the on the schedule and, and try to have some some videos going out on a on a more regular basis, early and often, as they say here in Chicago. So hopefully we'll see you again up here in the attic. Mm -hmm.